Welcome. Whoa, that's a, that's a good microphone today. We have some announcements, and then if anybody else has one, raise their hand. Let me say my three first, and then number one, August 3rd is going to be Theater in the Park, and talk to Joyce and or Karen Brown about the coordinating. Wait, wait, wait. There is a microphone coming. We'll see if, oh. Um, I just want everybody to know that it starts at 8.30. So it's like a two hour, two and a half hour show and it starts at 8.30. So it's gonna be kind of a late night. So, so if you want to carpool, let us know. We can get a carpool going from the church if that's if that's too late to drive but you really want to go we'll figure it out all right that's august 3rd check i'm checking that off august 4th is going to be our lunch and learn for learning the defibrillator paul calls it something else but yeah, some initials, I don't know what they are, but it's going to be a lunch and learn sandwiches are going to be here and we're going to have a sign up sheet for salads and desserts and that's after church on August 4th. Check. And then um, and we have decided the pastors have decided to switch our um, congregational meeting from August 18th to August 11th, the week before, so that Ron can be here with us. And so we're gonna get you more information about that as we go forward, but it's gonna be in place of the Sunday school hour, and that will be at nine o'clock, is what we usually do for that morning session. So congregational meeting, August 11th. Please put that on your calendars. Any other announcements? list i do want to mention yesterday's tragic events um, and i want to make sure that we put on our own prayer lists and on our prayer list former president trump and our country in general because we are just we've got way too much turmoil in our country right now let's make sure that we keep all of our political leaders and the health of them in our prayers anybody else have that on their prayer list Kanitha. Oh, not for the prayer list. Oh, well, another announcement. But Tuesday, instead of tacos, we're going to Johnny's Tavern for Taco Tuesday. They have tacos there too, and we like them real well, so we decided to go back there this Tuesday. Do you know what time yet? No. Okay, she, she always texts with the time. So if you want to be on the list for Taco Tuesday, text Kanitha because she sends out a group text and whenever she sends it to you, you respond with yes. You do not respond with no. I've learned this lesson. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. <laughs> you respond with yes. Okay, Joyce has another one. That's okay. That's what this time is for. Uh, I just wanted to remind people about Book Club Thursday. Okay. At 7, under Thank the whispering you. door. Book Club under the Whispering Door by T.J. Clune, seven o'clock Thursday night, and I believe Joyce is leading it. Am I right? Okay. Anyone else? I I would like to say a short prayer before we say our introit, um, because of the the turmoil that's going on in our country right now. Would you Would you pray with me, dear Lord? We have so many people on our list for prayers today, but I want to lift up former President Trump. I want to lift up all of our leaders that they might feel peace and the understanding from you that they are safe and that this world can get better. I ask that you be with each of us as we discuss politics and religion and things that are tough to always remember that you love us and that we love each other. Help our country 
and help us as individuals and help our church as we move forward to always have your spirit with us. In Christ's name, amen. Very good. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 121. Our theme today is, is um, set our eyes on Christ, set our hope on Christ. And so what you will hear a lot today is scriptures about hope. And this is a psalm about hope. And our choir has a lovely song called Psalm of Hope later in our, in our service. This is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Stand and sing with us, 102. Thank you.
This opening prayer is from the choir piece, Psalm 23, it is inspiring, and you get to hear the words twice today, so I wanted to share the words with you. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. I shall not want. How could I ask for more? He leads me by still water, and I shall not want. He leads me by still water. How could I ask for more? He is enough for every need. He is enough for every broken dream. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I am satisfied with what he gives. He will provide and faithfully supply. He leads through the valley. I shall not want. He is enough for every need. I shall not want. I'm satisfied with what he gives. He is the night, he is the day, he is the sun, he is the shade, he is the ocean, he is the stream. In every song, he is my theme. I shall not want for more. Amen. The scripture for today is the first part of Ephesians. Now, Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians who were the saints there and wanted to give them some encouragement and so on. So I would like to share that scripture with you and then more things will come, okay? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. In love, he's destined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To praise, to the praise of his glorious grace, <coughs> excuse me, which he has freely given us in the one that he loves. In him, we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the richness of God's grace that he lavishes on us with all wisdom and understanding. In him, we were also chosen. In the order that we are, we were the first to hope in Christ. My, uh, we who were the ones who were first to hope in Christ might be the one for the praise for his glory. And you also were included in the Christ when you heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the peace and the praise be all his glory. Now, I'm sure you understood every word of that. I really needed some help. I read it over. I got a different version of the Bible, read it. I got a third version of the Bible, read it. I went to the concordance and looked it up. I'm struggling, okay, with what all he was meaning by that. So after reading several of these, I... Uh, I went to some commentaries that gave me some other words that went along with it. So these other words that I found were immeasurable greatness, power, forgiveness, lavished, abundance, God's love. Well, those are all good words. But in the worship helps, it gave me some other ideas. And that's when it started speaking to me a little bit, what was really being meant.
last week, we had a small cup with grape juice or water, whichever you chose, and you drank of that. Was it enough? Sometimes it's not enough. So we need to refill our vessel. <gasps> okay, that's why I've got all this pads up here. <laughs> and have some more. Is this enough? It's limitless. There's an abundance of water. You all probably have one of these someplace. What's inside there? Little sand? Okay, so we can tip it over and we can uh, cook her egg. Uh, we can play a game and you've got that much time to get your move done. Uh, is that enough sand for everything? Probably not. So we'll give a little more sand. Give a little more sand. Spill a little. Give a little more sand. I could keep dipping forever. Will I run out? Is it abundant? Abundance really means that you have more than you need. Lavished means that something that you have an abundance of, you generous, generously give away. In a moment, you'll hear the rest of the story. Okay, so it's, yeah.
picture is calling me, I will be there in a month. Those of you who may recognize that from Sedona. Didn't realize that was coming up until this morning. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. What would be a small amount? We've talked about little small amounts and then medium and then large. So what would be a small amount of God's love? What would it look like? Is the love of God a measurable amount? I'm thinking the love of God really is abundant, limitless. You know, that's something that's poured out on each one of us. This represents you. This is a vessel. You are a vessel. God's blessing comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. Happen to have a few golf balls. Some of them have little ornaments on them. Some of them are pretty hollow. Some of them even bounce. It will bounce, but I won't go chase it. Okay, squishy. Are all golf balls the same? Are, are all of our blessings the same? Some of them have little holes in it. Some of them got cut away a little bit. But they're still all blessings that come from God. Once in a while, you get ones a little bit bigger. Some of them are almost perfect, just exactly what I needed. Sometimes you got to hold it up. Sometimes the outer shell might get cracked off. You know, I thought I had a blessing coming, but we're not really sure about it. It was there. It was there. I found another piece of it. They do bounce. All the blessings that we receive are not the same. They're what we need at that point in time. And sometimes our vessel gets full. And we're full of the blessings that God gave to us. And then we feel like, you know, I've really been blessed. I'm, I'm in good shape. But you know what? There's always room for more. So we keep receiving these blessings. And even though our cup runneth over, we're continually blessed, and we get more and more blessings. And surely, that's all the blessings we can have. My vessel is full. I've got all the blessings that I can possibly ever imagine. But I don't think God's done with me yet. I think he still wants to continue to bless me and bless you. 
Is there any more room for more blessings in our vessel? How many blessings can we receive? God's love is immeasurable. It's limitless. It's abundant. And it's lavished on each one. You, me, all of us. The good news that Paul was sharing here to the Ephesians is that the love of God is for all people. Experiencing that love brings hope to our living. The grace of God is exemplified as Christ lavishes his love on each one of us. In part of my searching around for ideas and so on, I ran across a, uh, no, uh, this is this later, no, I'll get to that later. I went to the hymnal, but you know I always go to the hymnal, okay? <laughs> And there's a hymn by Carol Owens that you all know. It's called Freely. Freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. Paul's letter to the Ephesians was shared to bring hope to ordinary people just like you and me. Paul expresses praise for the gifts of God and what they have done in the past, what they're doing right now, and what they're going to do in the future. Past, present, future, joy, joy, Sorrow, hope. Remember those lines? You know, life is full of ups and downs. We face each day's challenge with these blessings that we have received to give us hope to keep on keeping on. And now the song that I ran across when I was actually trying to find some other poetry and so on that, that talked about hope and being re receiving blessings and so on, it was a, a singer by the name of Andrea Day, and the song was titled, entitled Rise Up. And just the chorus lines of it is what I wanted to share with you, kind of where we are sometimes in our lives and where we can hope to be. You're broken down and tired. Tired of living life on a merry-go-round. And you can't find the fighter. But I see it is in you. So we're going to walk it out. I'll rise up. In spite of all the aches, I'll rise up. And I'll do it a thousand times again. Find and experience God's love for you. Feel forgiveness. Experience grace that only God can give to you. Power. Power is given to you to keep you moving. Onward, forward, as you go through your life's journey. A motto that I have tried to live with my life is if I want to move, 
I've got to keep moving. Think about that. God's love brings hope. It brings positive energy to us. A devotion that I read about hope shared it this way with seven examples that are found in scriptures. Hope believes anyway. Hope resists resentment. Hope has friends. Hope expects God to answer. Hope doesn't stop believing. Hope is louder than the crowd. Hope hears God's voice. All of us here have been abundantly blessed in our lives. And we all share with others out of that abundance. Think about and ask yourself, what is the hope that I can share with someone else? How is it that I can express the immeasurable love of God that I feel to someone else? Can you commit yourself this week to demonstrate somehow God's love for his creation? A phrase that helps me focus on this practice in my living of, of life and something I do think about frequently. Think global, the big picture, but act local. Do things that I have direct contact with. And I think that is a way that I, in my life, can express hope to others. The hope that I feel I want to express to other people. Experiencing the love of God does bring hope to all of our living. It assists us on our life's journey. It helps us to keep going or to keep on keeping on, as the old expression goes. The 23rd Psalm must have been ringing bells with everybody today. Uh, obviously with the choir, I was, I was aware of that, but I felt like this 23rd Psalm really does speak to our message of the day. I'm going to read it, and I know you all probably have it memorized, right? But to give you a little help, I'll stop at the end of every phrase. Now you can say it out loud if you want to, or you can say it quietly to yourself, your choice. Okay, but I will state a line and then pause. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valleys of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God has lavished you.
Set our hope on Christ. Set our hope on peace. The short time in my life I was with my mother, she would always ask me, Christine, why are you so angry? Well, life in general can make one angry. However, by God's blessing and his son Jesus Christ showing me the light, my angry soul was turned into a peaceful soul. I am at peace with myself and with the Holy Spirit. This morning, it's a little challenge. If you are one with a peaceful soul and at peace with yourself and the Holy Spirit, it doesn't hurt for a now and then refresher. However, if you are one that is struggling with your internal soul, be in thought and prayer with God and his son, Jesus Christ. Ask that you may be blessed and to see the light, that your soul may be changed into a peaceful soul. Therefore, you can go forward and be an example of peace to others in life and the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. This we pray in Jesus name, amen.
For more than 20 years, Community of Christ has used the term disciples' generous response in place of offertory. It emphasizes that our offerings are our response as disciples to generous God. Mission ties may be designated for worldwide mission or local mission. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Doctrine and Covenants 164.9a. Beloved children of the restoration, your continuing faith adventure with God has been divinely led, eventful, challenging, and sometimes surprising to you. By the grace of God, you're poised to fulfill God's ultimate vision for the church. Our offerings are more than meeting budgets or funding mission. Through our offerings, we can tangibly express our gratitude to God, who is the giver of all. As we share our mission ties, either by placing money in the place, plates at the back of the sanctuary or through e-tithing, use this time to thank God for the many gifts we received in life. I'm using hymn 618 for our prayer today. Please pray with me. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our God lives up to you. We are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
God's love is immeasurable. God's love is abundant. God's love is lavished on all of us. I want to do something a little different for our sending forth. Ron and I are campfire leaders, so we're going to lead you in hymn 627, Freely Give.